All right guys, 2009 Hyundai Santa Fe. Uh, for a couple months now, I've had a check engine light and a couple of EVAP codes on there. And when I fill up the gas tank, I've noticed a gasoline smell inside. And it's especially bad if you take a left turn. That's when you really, really get strong. So I did a little investigating and I kind of had a suspicion it had something to do with the uh, these uh, access panels here under the seat. And uh, if you want to know how to get this far, about a year and a half ago, I put new float level sensors in. And uh, in that video, I show how to get these seats out. I'll put a link in the description. But anyway, so since it was most present taking a left turn, I focused on this passenger side. And uh, so it's got these metal covers here. They're, they got some sticky stuff here that kind of holds it down. And um, you got a lock ring that uh, holds this assembly down. And this is the tool that you use to take that off. And what I discovered here, so this side, driver's side, your this is your fuel pump. This side basically just has the, the float level. Both sides have this, but um, yeah, anyway, this side just houses that. And what I discovered is this plastic is pretty bad. It's like deteriorated. Um, and then right there, like right here, you can see that's where it's leaking out of. And uh, I attempted to fix this the right way. I ordered what I thought was the right part and it showed up and this is the wrong part. It's supposed to have a little um, outlet right here on the back side. So I gotta get my money back on that. And there is no aftermarket replacements for this. Um, you can find them online about 260. I think the dealers want about 480 for this for this assembly. So here's what we're gonna do. JB Weld. So I read some reviews on this stuff. It seems pretty decent. We're just gonna put it inside there and maybe some on the outside and we'll seal that up. And that's where my check engine light's coming from too, because uh, it's letting the pressure out. Um, so yeah, it's a two-part epoxy. So you're supposed to squeeze this bottom one to get it, you know, mix these two together. But I was reading some reviews and one guy mentioned, uh, put these in a container and mix them there because it sets pretty fast. So I'm going to do that. Um, and then I took the bottom part of this assembly, uh, just right here. I just disconnected that and we'll take this electrical connection off and we'll bring this to the bench and, and work on it. Cause this, this lower half has a hose that's connected to the driver's side. So that's why I just want to take this top off. All right. And just to show you that this is indeed where it's leaking from. Go ahead and put some fluid inside here. And you can see it's dripping out right there. Okay, so the directions say to roughen the surface. So I'll take some sandpaper and roughen that up. Uh, this is 220 variety. All right, we got our surface roughened up and I cut these two pouches apart and 
I'll put one on one side, one on the other, then we'll mix it up. All right, I'll go ahead and mix these two together. All right, that looks like a pretty good gray color. Go ahead and put it in here. All right, it's been four hours. That's what uh, the instructions say. Um, so this is what we ended up with. Turned out pretty good. All right, let's start putting this back together. All right, we'll get the bottom and top half assembled back together. like that. Okay, so this is the, the locking ring and I just wire wheeled it and threw some paint on it because it was kind of crusty. Okay, so I'll put this unit inside. You might have to bring this end around here and turn it around so you have more room. But before you connect anything, make sure you put this ring on and make sure your O-ring's in place and there's no like rust chunks under it or anything. All right, so now at this point, I'll take my, my tool and lock it into place. It's got this uh, slot right here. This switch should go into there. And I just got a three quarter inch breaker bar. And this can take some force, so I might even have to get a cheater bar on this. And it pretty much pops in like that. Okay, then you can go ahead and reconnect all these. And this electrical connection's on this cover. And there's the one right here. All right, the next day, so I went to Quick Trip and fill up the tank, and I left this cover off so I could see if the fix worked, and I'm happy to report that it did, because if it didn't, this would be all 
wet with gas right here. So hopefully this is a permanent fix, but I guess we'll find out. Um, so up next, this cover, this tacky sealant that they use gets kind of screwed up and it's not as sticky anymore after you've taken this off a few times. So I went to Home Depot and I got some uh, roof and flashing polyurethane sealant. So I'll go ahead and just put a, a bead around here so that this seals up good. I'm thinking that's may have been why this gas smell got inside uh, to begin with because this wasn't sealed up 100% from when I did the, the level sensors. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'd say that seal pretty yeah. hard. <laughs> I don't think you're getting that off now. No. Okay, and then I'll just use some Gorilla Tape to hold this carpet down. It's from the factory. It does, it is like kind of pre-cut and then you cut it the rest of the way. So I'll just take some Gorilla Tape. And you won't see this because it's under the seat. All right, last step, we'll uh, clear this check engine light. So here we got a P0442, which is a small evap leak and the other week i also had a p0456 which is a very small leak um if you don't have one of these code readers you can get them on amazon for like 20 or 25 bucks they're pretty handy to have so we'll go ahead and erase this code Okay, so no codes found. So hopefully this will take care of that uh, the leak and the and the engine light. All right, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe.